Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Jose Marcos, I'm Emilio Lozano, I'm the head of WordPress Solutions, and I'm going to talk you about Moodle WordPress 4, which we just launched. Uh, but I want to start the presentation with this slide. This is the WordPress team. So uh, this product is possible thanks to them. They have been doing a great job. It's an amazing team. So if you see them around and you have any questions from them, for them about WordPress, just ask because they know everything about WordPress. Okay, so uh, Moodle WordPress 4. So what is Moodle WordPress? Moodle WordPress is, is uh, the best LMS in the world because it's based on L Moodle LMS, which is the best LMS in the world. So we have some extra features. So that's why I call, I call it the best LMS in the world. So Moodle WordPress is based on Moodle LMS. So it has all the features that Moodle LMS has. And in addition to that, we have some specific features that are very tailored for the for organizations. So not only for the corporate market, but also for other kinds of organizations. And very briefly, these features are uh, multi-tenancy, which allows you to create um, different, to have different learning environments within the same installations for different institutions, companies, departments, franchises, everything. Users are completely isolated, but you can share content among tenants and you can, as an admin, manage all of them. You can delegate management and a lot of, and a lot of great things that you can do with multi-tenancy. With dynamic rules, you can automate almost anything in a WordPress installation just by creating rules using conditions. And once those conditions are met, there are some actions that are executed. So basically, um, onboarding, allocation to program based on departments and things like that. You can really automate everything in WordPress. With organization structure, you can create teams in WordPress. So it's basically creating collectives of users based on Orga an organizational hierarchy, positions, or departments, and then you can use those teams to target them for different things. Reports, custom pages for them, uh, creating teams, and basically uh, assigning permissions to this group in a very easy way. With programs, you can just take uh, some courses and put them into a learning uh, pathway that the users uh, have to follow, following th their requirements. So it's, very, it's a very easy way to create the learning pathways. And with certifications, you can make them uh, recurrent. So you can set an expiration date, and you can make them take the same certification year over year. So this is great for compliance. We have also certificate, which is basically a diploma that you can issue to a user upon learning completion or any other things using dynamic rules. So you can virtually issue a certificate uh, for anything in WordPress. Then we have custom pages. That is a new feature that we'll talk about uh, pretty soon. We have appointments booking to uh, enable users, learners, to book one-to-one -one or uh, seminar sessions very easily within a course. And finally, we have a feature to migrate things very easily between WordPress sites. And of course, Report Builder, but Report Builder now is part of Moodle LMS. And Moodle WordPress is available only through certified service providers. So, and why we do this? Uh, well, there are several reasons why we do it, but basically uh, we want to improve Moodle LMS in two ways. One way is by contributing to the whole platform sustainability with more revenues, but the other is by rolling out features into Moodle LMS from time to time. The last one we, we have rolled out is Report Builder, that you all can try in Moodle LMS. OK, so Moodle WordPress 4. This is what we are all for here today. So Moodle WordPress 4 it has a fresh and intuitive interface and navigation, because basically it's based on Moodle 4. So all the improvements in UX and in feature that Moodle 4 brought, that they're amazing, are uh, in Moodle WordPress 4, and we took them into the next level, as you will see. But before showing them, I'd like to show you, I'd like to, uh, you to come with me through a journey uh, on the dashboard design that we have followed. This is WordPress 3.11 dashboard. So at that time, when we launched WordPress 3.11, we focused more on the features themselves, on how they, they were and how programs should be, a learning pathway, certifications, and so on. Because there were no place where we could put 
these features in Moodle LMS. We had to invent it. So we decided to put them on the dashboard, so it was very easy for the user to access to it, and we focused on the features. But the dashboard was quite busy. So you can see that you have the, the teams. OK, I cannot use both things at the same time. So you have the navigation on top. Uh, the dashboard was responsible on telling you about the completion of the program. The program is part of our certification. This is the completion criteria for the certification. Then you have a bunch of courses there with completion, courses and program mix. So it was super busy for the user. With WordPress 4, we wanted to start from scratch. So we started iterating this and testing it with users. So this is, was the first iteration. It's basically uh, WordPress 3.11 dashboard, but nicer. So cleaner with a with a more 4.0 design, but it was still the same thing. Tabs, a lot of information in the dashboard, and we started to test this. And we found out that for users, for learners, it was quite difficult to understand what a program is. So they didn't understand what's this. So they just, you know, explore it, and, and finally they get to the course, but it was not easy for them. So we started removing things and simplifying it. So the next step was this. This still looks like what WordPress 3.11, but you can see that there are two blocks in the dashboard. So now we don't show the learner everything they can do. We just focus on what they're doing and what they need to do next. And we continue testing this until we get to this. So this is WordPress dashboard by default. And it's responsible of one thing and only one thing, which is telling the user, as I said, what you're doing and what you, do, what you need to do next. So as I logged in for the first time in my WordPress site, I would say that I'm not doing anything, I don't have anything in progress, and I can just choose any of the courses at the bottom. And that's it. I, I will discover what programs are, uh, what are the courses I need to take in the programs. I will discover them later, but at least I know exactly what I need to do. And we could do this. This is the dashboard. Uh, sorry, before I move, move on, I just wanted to say that this is the dashboard by default, but Mural Workplace is based on Mural LMS, so the timeline, the calendar and all the blocks in LMS are still available. So if partners or uh, customers, they use uh, um, different approach on courses, more like LMS with fixed dates in all activities, like more academic, they can still use the Moodle LMS dashboard or they could combine both. And of course, in WordPress, the dashboard is fully multi-tenant. So it's, you can have a default dashboard or each tenant can have their own dashboard. So another of the improvements we've done is uh, streamline the login page. It's very similar to Moodle LMS, but uh, it includes one key thing, which is the multi-tenant authentication. So in Moodle LMS, uh, in Moodle WordPress, sorry, you have uh, authentication plugins, and you can configure them by tenant with different configurations. It's, only, it's also slightly different, so you know that you're logging into our, our WordPress sites because the design is different. So my course is page. This is a very important improvement in Moodle uh, LMS 4.0 because uh, with the My Courses uh, page, we had the opportunity to simplify the dashboard. This, this was one of the reasons why we started removing things from the dashboard, but we didn't just remove them. We had them here. So now, uh, as a user, you can see your dashboard, which tells you what to do, what you're doing, and what to do next. And in My Courses, you'll find your personal learning catalog. So, Unlike in, Mur in Mural LMS, you had my courses page, which shows you the courses, but in WordPress, we have all WordPress learning entities in here. So you can see that there are programs also, uh, along with courses. And courses or programs, if they are overdue, they show this bad. So the user knows at a glance what is overdue or what is about to expire, or expired certifications and things like that. So this is very useful. So users will come here to find their learning, if they, uh, their past learning or to explore the programs they are assigned to. So this is uh, a key part of the new uh, user workflow in, in WordPress. And from here, you can get to the program page. This is another new thing in, in WordPress. In WordPress 3.11, programs didn't have any specific page. So programs were just in the dashboard and all the information was shown there. In WordPress 4.0, uh, following the term with the My Courses page, we wanted to create uh, a specific page for the programs where we could show all the information. It's, like, it's very similar to the program page, but for programs. So 
it has two parts. The first one is the cover page. So the first time you get to a program, before you actually get into that program, the user will see the program cover page. In this program cover page, user will see the information about the program, the relevant dates for them, because this is relative to the user, when they are supposed to complete this program. And if this program is part of a certification, they will also see it. Certification within the relevant dates. And then the program structure. So you can, they can have a look at the program before they actually get into it. And once they get it, they get into the program page. So in the program page, uh, the program page is responsible uh, for the navigation through the programs and th through the sets and courses, sorry. So the user can easily navigate through the whole program structure, see all the sets, what are the things that they need to, com to do to complete that program or that set, and what are the things they need to do to unlock different courses. So they can easily navigate through the, through the uh, program structure. And they can find the courses that they have recently accessed here. The information they saw in the cover page is also, is always available in the information tab. So they can just check there all the dates and all the relevant information. And we have replicated this structure also in courses. So courses have also a cover page. So again, the first time you get into a course, you'll see this cover page with information relevant to the course. If the course, whether the course is part of a program or not, course summary, dates, files, custom fields, everything. And they see this before they get into the course. So if the course, if they need to enroll into that course, they'll see it as part of the enrollment page, or if they have been enrolled or they can just access to the course, they will see it in a mobile form. So they always see this cover page. So they get full context of on when they are. And it's important because when they get to a course, if the course is part of a program, they'll see it there. This course is part of a program for you, and they can get to the program from there. So this is part of this um, work we, we're doing to explain the users what programs are, or at least you know, uh, help them to understand that gradually so they don't need to see everything in advance. These pages that I just shown you is the, are the first step towards a learning catalog, because we needed to add all these elements so we could um, make them part of a learning catalog, make them public, connect them with e-commerce, uh, different enrollment methods, allocations, and so on. So this is the first step towards that. And the navigation through these program pages, the My Courses, it's very quick and intuitive, and especially in the, in the program page, because it's, everything is done almost instantly. So you don't need to wait you know, for the page to load. So it's very, it's very um, the experience is very nice for the, for the user. OK. so. Another feature, our new feature in WordPress are the custom pages. So custom pages is a way for admins to create dashboards for specific audiences. So basically what an admin does is creating a new dashboard, adding blocks there, configuring an audience, and make it available to those users. I'll, I'll explain you how it works. But this is a custom page that I just created using WordPress 4 with report builder, report block, and that's it. There's nothing else. So you can see that in the main navigation, you'll see the my site um, element in the navigation. This is the custom page that you're seeing. And it has a report showing courses within categories with the last uh, course, the, the online users in the platform, and the last courses completion everywhere. So the user who have completed the course, which course, which users, and when they completed it. And this is all everything created with report builder in in WordPress. So users can create global or tenant custom pages. If you create a custom page globally, it will be available in all tenants. Or you could make them specific to certain tenants. So it's just creating. It, it works very uh, similar to all the pages in WordPress. You just create the, the page, and you can duplicate it and move them between global and local. And once you have created the page, just get there, turn editing on, and add your blocks. So you can add blocks as if you were adding blocks to the dashboard. All, das all blocks that are available in the dashboard will be available here, too. And finally, you configure the audience. So in this case, this page is available only to site and tenant admins, and also to users who, are, who have permissions to manage organizational structure. This is just an example. So all these users, when they log in, they'll see this page on the primary navigation, and, and they can just access here. So 
this has many possibilities, countless possibilities, because our partners, the, all the developers can create their own blogs, or reports, and add them here. And tailor them only to a specific audiences they can have, whether it's a dashboard for the sales department, learning department, admins, teachers, or whatever. And these are the audiences that are available. So you can make it to all users, users with the system roles, specific users, uh, based on jobs, and so on. Okay, so my team's page is actually a custom page, right? So in WordPress 3.11, we have a, my, a team's tab. So managers, when they logged in into WordPress, they show the team overview blog with the information about their teams. We have completely um, refactored this feature and we have turned it into a custom page. So now, by default on, on, on install in WordPress, a new custom page will be created. It's a global custom page available to managers and department leads that it only contains the team overview blog. But the admin can customize this page. They can add more blocks, remove it, or even create uh, specific pages for uh, using this blog for other audiences. So let's see it in detail. So the custom page, the My Teams page, it includes this block. So this, the Teams overview block has been completely redesigned. So as a manager, you can have see at a glance all of your team. And if there's some uh, overview learning, expert certifications, or anything requiring your attention, you'll see this red dot. And then you can drill down, expand, and see exactly what are the certifications, programs, and courses this user is taking and how they're tracking against them. And you have access to full reports of everything, certifications, programs, and courses. So at a glance, you can just have a view of all your, how, how your team is tracking against the learning goals. And, it's your, and if you're a HR manager, you could see the whole company and filter and using advanced filtering to find exactly what you want. As part of this block, we have also redesigned all re system reports in WordPress. So now the certification, program and course progress reports are, uh, make more sense and they are more um, um, similar or they're more homogeneous than they were before. And we reuse these reports all around. So right now, reporting in WordPress is more consistent uh, within the, the, um, the My Teams page. Okay, so the app. Obviously, we have the WordPress 4 app, which is uh, also about to be released, and the WordPress for apps supports all the features in WordPress for, and also it can be branded as, as usual. But there's one thing that makes it special, this fully multi-tenant. So with the app, you can have uh, a single app for all the tenants in your uh, institution, your installation, or you could have a specific apps for a specific tenants. And this is something that we have introduced recently in the, in the app. And finally, about the new features in WordPress, uh, I wanted to highlight that Ripoll Builder is now in LMS, as you all know. Uh, this took us a lot of time, but uh, we wanted to do as part of our commitment with Moodle LMS because we really wanted to improve reporting across the whole Moodle LMS product because with uh, Report Builder is a way that you can just uh, make it more consistent with system reports and over time, all the reports in Moodle LMS will be compared gradually to Report Builder, and that way all reporting will be more consistent. And with Report Builder, developers can create reports for their plugins much more effectively, and it will be easier for the user to report on those plugins. So that's something that we thought would be a great improvement for LMS, and that's why uh, we did it. In WordPress, we, uh, have, had, we have done a, a tool, so WordPress takes care of upgrade of reports, so it always uh, automatically upgrades the report from previous versions to the newest. And if there are any conflicts, we manage them and we and the users can edit the reports and convert them manually. Okay, so this is WordPress 4 at a glance. Uh, if you want to know more, if you want to try it, we are at the products bar and we have a stand over here so you can just reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll love to give you a demo of more WordPress. So what is next? So this is what this is then the, the shorter term, shorter term priorities in, in WordPress. Um, in case you don't know, we have a product advisory group 
with partners, so we decide with them what has to be done next in WordPress, what are the priorities for the next six to 18 months. So I didn't want to give you more visibility because uh, we're going to focus on the short-term priorities and probably we'll discuss again and assess all the priorities. So we're doing this continuously. But what I can tell you is the next big feature to come to WordPress will be the learning catalog. That's something that will be coming next, probably in 2023. Uh, for sure in 2023, but it will be probably early 2023. And we're going to add charts in Report Builder. And then we'll focus on improving even more our multi-tenancy feature. Priorities might change, and they will, because we discuss this with our PAG on a timely basis, but this is what I can tell you. Learning catalog will be for sure the next big feature to land in Moodle WordPress. And that's it. Oh, 10 minutes. So if you want to get a demo, we have our service providers all around, so just go uh, talk to them if you want to Moodle WordPress for your institution. They can give you a demo, or you can reach out to us in the product bar, and we'll be more than happy to show you what uh, we've done. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much, Emilio. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have a few minutes, so if you would like to ask anything, please raise your hand. Uh, could you uh, could you tell me if uh, certain activities that are standard Moodle work better in this workplace than others? Sorry, can you say that again? I, I think yeah. I didn't get it. What what activities work best for your workplace? Okay, what activity modules? Anything. So because workplace can be uh, can be used in any environment. So basically, the same thing that worked for you in LMS will work in in workplace. We have. Um, Two activity, well, one activity model that is exclusive to WordPress, which is the appointments booking module. But apart from that, it really depends on the institution or the organization which is using it. In the organization sector, usually the, the courses are quite different. So they're mostly quizzes, scoring packages, uh, mostly that two things, and, and, and resources, but I'm mostly focused on, on that. Okay, I just have one more question related to that. Uh, one of the problems we have is uh, computer literacy. So could, do you have a fix for that? <laughs> I wish I had it, but <laughs> OK. So, so basically, anything that works with LMS works with Twitter. So if you have a solution for that in LMS, it will work in the workplace. Thank you. Another, yeah. Here, there's another one. How about theme modification? Is it possible that there will be show up other themes in the future? Or how much modification is possible per tenant or for the whole platform? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. So in Moodle Workplace, you can uh, brand the different tenant within the, Wii, the uh, UI. So you can change the primary color and 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 the logos and everything, so you can just have a different branding for the tenants, but also you can obviously create your own themes. We advise our partners to, to base their themes in ours, but our theme is based on Boost, so it can be theme, yeah, of course. But we advise our partners to base their uh, work on, on ours. And in fact, uh, WordPress 4 is more theme friendly than it was uh, 3.11 because we have less things that rely on the theme. It's a um, so um, it's obviously really exciting seeing these features make their way back into Moodle Core. Um, Report Builder is fantastic. Um, what's next on the roadmap for that? Good question. <laughs> so we don't have a roadmap for that. So basically, we decide on a one by one basis, and it depends really on what is coming next. But we always want to keep and need to keep Moodle WordPress value proposition uh, in that for our partners. So that's a, f that's a balance we need to make. But if you're asking about the next feature to come to Moodle LMS, we don't know it yet. We haven't decided yet. We're just exhausted that after <laughs> releasing uh, Report Builder. Mm. 
maybe I ask the same question which already was asked, but is there a, a kind of tag inside of Moodle org plugin database that I can identify workplace plugins which are certified or tested with workplace already? Okay, so um, it's great that we have Marina, our architect there, because she's, uh, she has a session after this, so you can ask her more questions. But basically, so we have in the, in the plugins database, we have um, a batch for the WordPress ready plugins. Uh, that does, it doesn't mean that the plugins that don't have that batch don't work at all at WordPress, but those are the plugins that our partners have tested uh, thoroughly and they uh, know they work without any issues. But in most of the cases, the plugins will work out of the box. We just need to make sure that uh, if there's a plugin, um, that they work well with their features. But something they just work well, but they could work better if they had a deeper integration with WordPress. So it, it's likely that any plugin that you can pick will work in, in WordPress from the community uh, repository. Okay, I think we have can time I for one more last question. Um, hi. Uh, I have a, two questions. Um, sorry, <laughs> hijacked that one. Um, so the first question is if you have thought about integrating the groups in your report builders and dynamic rules, like when you select um, a rule uh, to have a course, then if you have thought of nesting it to groups, um, that's my first question. And then I can go to the second one. Um, the second one is um, about the um, organization structure. If you have thought of like nesting it even more so that people um, that are department leads or managers, um, they're not, they don't all receive the notifications for people that are in smaller departments and that there's actually some stop in how far the notifications go. Okay, so the first question about groups, I'll be quick. So, Dynamic Rules is highly customizable, so it's, it's, uh, it has an API our partners can extend, so they can create virtually conditions and actions uh, of their own as part of their plugin development, but uh, we already use groups in some conditions. So, uh, as I can remember, as far as I can remember, you can enroll people directly into course groups, and there are other things around groups that, you know, are already available in Dynamic Rules. And about regarding the, the question about um, organization structure and organization structure, right now you can do uh, three things. So you can report, give permissions to report on, the, uh, on people, to receive notifications, and also to, um, to manage allocations to programs and certifications. So a manager can, just, can allocate people from their teams into programs and certifications if they have these permissions. Uh, we have some improvements in mind. There, there are some in our tracker. And one of the things will be like navigating through the organization structure so you could see easily what uh, uh, which is in what people is in each uh, position or department. So changing the way uh, you navigate through the organization structure. But that's just an idea in our roadmap. Okay, time's up. Thank, thank you very much. Well, as, as you can see in the screen, if you want to know more about Moodle Workplace, please go to the, our sponsors. They are uh, our partners that are over there, and they can give you a lot of information about Moodle Workplace. Thank you very much, Emilio. Thank you.